On your own? Yeah. There you go. What? By way of a thank you. I didn't do anything. Saved my dad's life. I didn't save his life, just covered him up and called an ambulance. Sat with him for two hours while they found him abed, reading to him. No, that was interesting. I'd not seen that magazine before, Weapons and Warfare. <laughs> <laughs> it's just come out. Fifteen parts with its own binder. Great. I'm still waiting on the binder, but I think it's going to be a good one. Plastic in raised squares, you know, like a hand grenade. <laughs> and does the newsagent like to take out a pin and lob it over the counter? <laughs> no, I have it delivered. <laughs> How is your dad? Stable. Oh, but these are lovely, I love these. I've put a little note in with them. Thanks for all you did and said. I'm so grateful dad's not dead. <laughs> Did you write that? Didn't take long. <laughs> Look, don't let on about me dad for now. It shook me up as this and I don't want a lot of sympathy. Morning. Hiya. You're early. Yes. Were you looking for Tony? Yes. Well, no. Oh, Flip. Bren, have you ever had a relationship go completely dead on you? Oh, I don't know. Are you having a problem? Well, I am, you see. Shall I make a brew? Lovely, thanks. You see, Mikey, you know, Mr Michael, he's awfully sweet and everything, but it's just not doing it for me. There's nothing happening, really. What do you want? Oh, I don't know. Romance, passion, some sort of unbridled physicality would be nice. <laughs> Sorry, I meant to your coffee. <laughs> mm, tw uh, coffee. 21st of June, first day of summer today. There you are, you see. Two minutes ago it was Christmas. Time's whizzing along and what am I doing with it? Big bog all. So what is it with Mr Michael? Is it like a bed thing? No, he's as keen as mustard in the old bed department. In fact, that's why I came in early, actually. He does do an awful lot of hopeful breathing in your ear hole first thing. That's <laughs> bonkers. Morning, Stan. Hey, that's a trolley mop, not a canteen mop. <laughs> How's your plaster dust? Awful. Driving us all mad. Oh, it's well documented, is that? The stress of small annoyances, that's what tipped them over the edge at Tripoli. It wasn't the shelling, it was sand between the buttocks. <laughs> I was just saying to Bren, Stan, I was quite glad to get out of bed early this morning, avoid any chance of unwanted sexual intimacy. Can we stick with dust as a topic, do you, mate? <laughs> Morning. Hello. Oh, have I missed Big Glenn? I was hoping for a quick one. You'll be lucky she's in a relationship. Well, I'm in a building society, but it doesn't mean I never go to the flipping bank. <laughs> Where were you at the weekend when I phoned? Did you call that payphone? Who answered? Oh, some mad woman. Ah, well, I can't hear it three floors up. She's a bit bonkers, that woman. She keeps snipping the phone wire and trying to talk to Liberace. <laughs> is she in? Mad Jean. Oh, golly, poor Jean, how is she? Not fit to do the job in my book. But one minute she just sat there like a... Blamonde. Yeah, we don't have Blamonges anymore, but yeah. And then someone will say the wrong thing. And then, whap, she'll snap, you know, she's suddenly like Cruella de Vil. How do you mean, Bren? Well, vicious. Oh, yes, I get you, sorry. When you said Cruella de Vil, I was thinking of Carmen Miranda. <laughs> She thinks everybody's looking at her, doesn't she? Like that poor little cross-eyed Gerald. Oh, yeah, on Friday. She thought he was ogling at her. Is that what you say? Ogling, ogling. Anyway, I mean, if Gerald looked like he was looking at her, he can't have been looking at her, do you know what I mean? She reckoned he was eyeing a cleavage or some old rubbish. I mean, what we were, an overall and then a tabard, we don't have a cleavage, do you know what I mean? <laughs> no, it's not a bunny girl outfit by any means. I mean, if Monica Lewinsky had had a flipping tabard on, no way would Bill Clinton have done anything with that cigar. <laughs> You sent her out for a box of matches and flipping smoked it. <laughs> so Keith's definitely left Jean. He's not coming back. Well, why would he? He's having a fantastic time with a dental hygienist in Cardiff. Why would he come back? Mm. Jean's seen his credit card statement, hasn't she? Mm. That's when she really went balmy. Two gross of condoms and a suede bomber jacket. <laughs> it's not moping. Where is she, Dolly? Oh, I don't know. I dropped her off. I went to the petrol station. <laughs> I've got this. You can't have that. I know. She's driven me to it. Oh, it's all right. I only wanted to hold it. <laughs> now, you keep it for me. And no matter what happens today, how vile Jean is, don't give it to me. So no matter how much Jean upsets us today, I have not to give it to you? That's right. Are you sure? Yes. Positive? No. <laughs> so he's got a girlfriend in Cardiff, Tony was saying. He had her for months before Jean found out. I said to her, no wonder the tread was down on his back tyres. <laughs> Hiya. Poor Jean. Hi, Anita. Is she in? Mad oh, Jean. On her way. She might have perked up with it being the first day of summer. Did you know it was, Anita? They said it's on Classic FM. They played that four seasons. Nigel Kennedy. No, it wasn't him. What were they called? Vivaldi. Anyway, they're on all week. 
Did Pedder call you last night? Five times. Pedder? He's my boyfriend. It's two weeks today. It's very romantic. <laughs> That's where G went wrong. She let the romance die. Is she in? The mad one. Mm. <laughs> Any minute now. Had a good weekend? No, it was totalcrud.com, actually. <laughs> went to my slimming club on Friday, put on half a pound. Flipping Tiffany had lost four. Oh, that's very good. She ate this old kebab she found in her handbag, been throwing up all week. Which <laughs> I thought of that. So you think Jean just sort of took Keith for granted? Oh, I'll say, slopping about in that terrible house coat. I don't know when she'd last washed it. It was covered in things you can't even buy anymore. <laughs> Treetop squash caramac. <laughs> it wasn't a house coat. It was a heritage centre. <laughs> well, look, she might be feeling better. It's summer, the sun's shining. She might have got over it. Hi, Jean. Morning, Jean. Hello, Jean. All right, Jean. Just bugger off, will you? <laughs> Brent? What? She hasn't got over it. <laughs> Shut us up five minutes. Oh, cripes. Anyway, the meeting's at 11.30. It'll be me and all the people from the Millennium Committee and the man from the old brewery. I'll be there. Oh, I forgot to do these. Do you do us a favour? Pop them on the counter for me, will you? Pop them on the counter. No, you pop them on the counter they want popping. What do you think I'm a flaming pop tart? <laughs> Come on, Jean, let's not have another day like this. Another day when my husband's run off with a lipless dental hygienist. No, let's not. <laughs> hey, Jean, it's the first day of summer today. You'll have pointed that out to all the others, I imagine. What? I don't remember warranting a personalised weather report before Keith slipped out of his underpants in South Wales. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the future, is it? Poor old G, not much luck in the bed department, better point out the weather. Or if it's a way of getting me to do some work, then come out and say so. Jean! Pussy putting around. Lovely day, Jean. Now do some bloody work. Why's nobody else do anything? Here's a dirty job. Oh, Jean will do it. Her husband's in Cardiff with a professional denture scrubber. <laughs> she deserves every filthy job we can chuck at her. Well, you can stick your bloody chocolates. You try being left alone in a house where you have to pull out the tumble dryer to turn off the stopcock and see how many chocolates you feel like popping onto the counter then. <laughs> What's that, Jean? Yep. I've said it before. She's not fit to do the job. She flung me a trouser base mouthful the other day. It's water off a rubber glove after 16 weeks in Catrick. <laughs> but suppose I'd been a woman. <laughs> She's loosened the plaster here. Come on, girls. Two minutes. Dolly, you know that Mars bar you told me not to give you? Yes. Do you want it? Yes. Can I have half of it? No, I need every bite. <laughs> Jean? You come out here now. Come on! I'll see you at 11.30, then. Right you are. Oh, cripes. I must rush, actually. Hat. I wouldn't bother. Sorry? Rush in wherever you're going. You'll be no bloody use when you get there. <laughs> <laughs> Whose are the flowers, then? Can someone take these eggs, please? The Brens. She's not saying who from. She must have pulled. Did you pull, Bren? Oi, that's enough from you. Sort those eggs out. Did you pull, Bren? No. You had a date with a caller gas man on Friday, didn't you? Was he hot stuff? Did you get it? Hot stuff, caller gas man. <laughs> Nothing happened with the caller gas man. Then why did he send you flowers? Caller gas man, Bren, was he firing in all cylinders? <laughs> Your life's not your own here. I'm like the flipping prisoner. You've been throbbing the weekend away, haven't you, you jammy old tart? <laughs> There's me stuck at home watching Crown Green Bowling. I have one drink with it. I nearly open. How are we, Bren? Yeah, go on. Twin, get that shutter up. You all right, Jane? Not bad. Ooh, I keep burping creme de menthe. <laughs> <laughs> About 12 rounds of white. Low fat spread. Better add. And where were you trolling off to on Friday night, excuse me? What? In a skirt? What? Must be love, eh, Brent? Wearing a skirt for the colour gas, man. Why shouldn't she wear a skirt? Well, she never wears a skirt here. Look at her. No, I've got footballer's legs that look like Nobby Styles. Nobby? <laughs> Styles, Norbert Peter Styles, born 1942, played for Man United, 60-71. Debut game, 1960, against Bolton Mondrian.